so let us come back and start with the refining techniques of your metallurgy chapter till now we have learned extraction of your iron we have learned extraction of zinc aluminium copper silver yes all these are covered in a very detailed way and let us come back and almost we are coming to the end of the chapter <clears throat> refining techniques so when you speak about refining techniques we your, your uh, ncrt book has a list of refining techniques so that includes electrolytic reduction i've already done this electrolytic reduction which is numbered uh, under video 16 please watch that video for electrolytic reduction after that i also did the distillation process distillation process which is numbered under video number 13 you can watch it you have a clear explanation of distillation process in that now let us come back to the next concept that is zone refining so when i speak about zone refining the metals which can be extracted through zone refining basically refining when we say it is the pure purification technique isn't it we're going to get the crystal clear part of that particular metal after your concentration methods froth rotation methods smelting reduction all these so this is the final method of refining the particular metal so the metals which I can extract through zone refining are germanium, silica, gallium and this is germanium arsenide, okay, the, uh, the alloy formation and indium and antimony combination, I can extract all this. So what is the principle which we are going to follow in zone refining? First most important thing is the impure uh, metal whatever is there that impure metal is made in the form of a rod so impure metal is made in the form of a rod and second important thing around the rod you have circular heaters or electrical heaters which keep rotating along this you have rotating circular heaters around this below this you have rollers and this rod keeps rotating over that and the circular coil keeps on heating the rod so what principle is followed in this basically the principle of solubility so solubility of or solubility of solid state and the liquid state of the ore this is what is taken into consideration here in liquidation we speak in terms of melting points here we are going to speak in terms of solubility so what happens when the rod is moving in this direction okay when the roller is moving in this direction now all the metal or the impure impurities which are present in the metal right they also move along with this roller right so once they move along with this roller as in when the stroller moves down and down, all the impurities get collected to one side. Just see, now they have taken impure germanium rod here. Now as the direction of this metal or the roller is in this direction, all the impurities start settling here. Right now, as and when this roller moves to this towards this direction, the leftover part, now all the um, um, impurities get collected on one side, and the leftover pure metal get recrystallized here. So it forms a thick, or oh, suppose here, till here it's getting uh, recrystallized in pure metal, and this part of the metal is cut, and that's the purest form which is used further. So one concept: the solubility of the impurity as well as your. Uh, molten metal so if i speak about the impurity impurities are on one side of the rod and the molten metal uh, the pure metal gets recrystallized in one side so this is one part which is cut and which is done in zone that's called zone refining done so next important thing when we speak about liquidation basically through liquidation process i can refine tin lead and bismuth now what is the process here or the principle here the principle is based on based on difference in melting points this is important difference in melting point here we took solubility so what are they going to do they are going to introduce suppose if you want to purify a lead right they are going to take that impure metal along with impurities and they allow the metal to go now here this is your heating furnace they are going to heat this furnace regularly so now when impure metal is dropped in into this when the heating furnace the whole furnace is getting heated we said based on the difference in melting point here the impurity impurity mp would be high and the over particle mp would be low so this is the concept so when they take the impure metal when this is heating i said the ore particle in melting point is low the ore that particular ore melts and it converts into a liquid form and which is collected so your pure metal is collected here and the leftover impurities because the melting point is very high they because once we collect the metal this is removed and the leftover impurities are or they, they uh, just uh, are present at this particular 
particular part which can be discarded right so simple logic melting point difference both the difference first the ore is collected next is a impurity which is collected but only thing they do is they're going to convert or they're going to take it in a sloping hearth so it's easy for the metal to flow so again uh, let us come back and see the next technique that is your chromatographic technique and uh, your uh, van urkel process